All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started for today. I apologize if you hear my dogs barking in the background when my husband comes in the door, they go a little crazy. Um, but today is our 11th session of the Diabetes Prevention Program. And um, today we're going to be focusing on coping with triggers. And um, there are lots of triggers for lots of different things in our lives, but definitely when it comes to food and um different things like that, we could have a lot of triggers. And so we'll talk about that today. But first, let's, uh, let's just check in and talk a little bit about last week's session. LaFedra did a great job uh, helping us talk about finding time for fitness. So has anyone got any comments about ways that they were able to find extra time to fit in um, activity or fitness over this past week? Like today, I walked to the cafeteria, but from where I was at, coming and going was almost one mile. Yes, and if you have been in North Mississippi Medical Center, our um, home hospital, there is a lot of different floors and a lot of ways you can get in some steps and activity in the hospital. And so definitely walking from one floor to another instead of taking an elevator or um, walking up the um, flights of stairs in the parking garage versus taking the elevator are great ways to get in some fitness. Anybody else? We could all be like this little puppy here, just doing his <laughs> his yoga boobs. <laughs> so we'll talk about what are triggers. Has anybody um, got any comments they would like to say? What are your thoughts of what uh, what a trigger is? Well, triggers are certain things in our lives that can cause us to react in a certain way. Um, there can be triggers that cause us to be anxious or triggers that can cause us to be angry or nervous. And there are triggers that can cause us to want to eat foods that we shouldn't either. And so there are things such as sights and smells, different sounds, again, just feelings or emotions. Um, even certain people can be triggers for us. Um, certain places, like looking at this picture, if we're at the checkout line in Walmart or one of their grocery stores and we see all of these, um, we know, marvelous tasting candy bars that are sitting here looking at us. And especially if they were to have a, um, a sign that said two for one or on sale for 99 cents a piece, you know, those could definitely be triggers that, uh, you know, that place, that situation that we're in at the moment will think, oh, that's a great deal. I need to go ahead and get some, even if we don't need it necessarily. So lots of things can be triggers for us. One thing about triggers is they can be helpful and they can be harmful or they can be both. So we take um, a hot eye on a stove, for instance. Um, this triggers us in a harmful way and a helpful way. It's harmful if we get burned, but it's also helpful to let us know, hey, we need to stay away from it because it's hot. And so Lots of things can kind of duplicate as there's both helpful and harmful. And then we see here this picture in an airport and we see the gate sign. And then on the way to the gate, we see a Cinnabon. <laughs> that could be a trigger to stop and uh, get us a cinnamon roll before we head to our gate. But it could also make us late for getting on our flight. So um, both helpful and harmful triggers can be at times. I don't think any of us would get stopped up by that Cinnabon sign, would we? I love some cinnamon rolls. Okay, so today we'll talk a little bit about Marta's story. So Marta has just learned that she is at risk for type 2 diabetes. So she needs to do some changing in her eating and with her fitness habits as well. And on a typical work day, she gets up at 530 in the morning and as soon as she enters the kitchen, she starts making her coffee. And she feels like just the smell of it helps her to wake up. And then she warms up a pastry to dunk in her coffee. By three in the afternoon, she's getting drowsy again. So she stops off at a coffee machine in the staff lounge. And at the vending machine, she buys herself another pastry to dunk in her coffee. 
Later that evening, Marta needs to unwind after a stressful day, so she curls up on the couch and watches TV. During one of the commercial breaks, she grabs a bag of chips and a beer. So what are some of the things in Marta's life that trigger her to act in unhealthy ways? Coffee. Coffee. It could be her trigger, definitely. Sometimes people see that as they need comfort food. So yes. her afternoon snack could be just something to maybe give her a meal, but it's not really. TV. Yes. And continuously eating. I'm sorry. Continuous eating? Yeah, but what's her triggers? We see that she's had a stressful day, so that could be a trigger. Um, she's sitting on the couch, so she's just having periods of inactivity. That might can be a trigger for us to go and grab things that we don't need just because we're sitting there, you know, empty-handed. Um, drowsiness is a trigger for her as well. So, you know, that made her go and get some coffee. Which So, Marta decides to cope with her triggers. So, these days, she gets more sleep. So she doesn't get as drowsy during the day. She still has her morning and afternoon coffee because who can do away with all coffee? Um, but instead of having that pastry for breakfast, she has some plain non-fat yogurt with berries. Marta stays away from the vending machine at work and instead she nibbles on baby carrots. Um, but she still watches TV to unwind after a stressful day and there's nothing wrong with that. But while she's watching that TV, she rides a stationary bike or she lifts weights while she watches it. And now she has cut up veggies for her evening snack instead of chips and a beer. So let's talk about some of your triggers. Um, your triggers are the things in your life that you tend to react to in a certain way. With, and sometimes we don't even think about it. You know, as we talked about previously, it can be sights, sounds, smells, feelings, people, places, activities. Um, so what are some things that might trigger, uh, trigger you to have unhealthy shopping habits? Anybody got anything they'd like to share? Don't go on an empty stomach. Exactly what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. I'm those sorry. can definitely trigger that. Okay. Not having Definitely. a dinner plan can be a trigger for me to get some. Yeah, because we get in there and, yeah. Or we just stop by the fast food restaurant on mm -hmm. our way in. Mm -hmm. So how would you cope with these triggers? Planning my meals for the week or my dinners. Mm-hmm. The list when you go to the grocery store. Yep. And making sure maybe we've even uh, eaten something before we go to the grocery store, right? Um, we already talked about some of these unhealthy eating habits. Um, so how would you cope with unhealthy eating habits? What might be a way you could cope with that? always having something available um, and I always say just having a plan in place um, for whatever it is you're trying to prevent um, and having you know that that coping mechanism there to help prevent you from going down the wrong path. Um, what triggers us to sit still instead of being active? I know sometimes if I've had a stressful day uh, Maybe not physically, but mentally, you know, I just want to come in and I just want to be still and be quiet. Um, but that's not necessarily a good thing for me because if I've had a stressful day, it can be helpful. And one of my, one of my ways to be able to cope could be that I could get up and exercise instead. And that, you know, we know that exercise and activity helps release those good endorphins and they would make us feel better instead of just wanting to sit down. So let's brainstorm some ways to cope with our triggers. So how do we cope, cope with some shopping triggers? And we talked about a few of these, but one way is we can, we can make 
a plan to avoid, we all know that area in the grocery store that we seem to go by, but we don't need to go by because every time we go by it, we pick up something that we don't need and put it in our buggy. So we can make plans to avoid that, that area when we're doing our shopping and make a list as some of you already said, and that's a, probably the number one best way to help yourself avoid shopping triggers is to make a list um, and just sticking to it and getting what you need. And then you also save money. How, again, how are we coping with the eating triggers? By restructuring our environment. That's one way. Um, by having the right things in our environment and not the um, wrong things that we need. Um, you know, the lady that was having Marta that was having issues with stopping by the um, the snack stand or the um, snack machine while she's at work. You know, she could change up her uh, her route at work, take another um, take another hallway or go through a different door and just kind of restructure it so she avoids those triggers. And then you can always think about what you're about to do and delay. Don't go for instant gratification. Just stop and hang on a few minutes. Even as many as 30 seconds can really change your mind about eating that thing that you don't need to eat or drinking something that you don't need to drink. We're talking about food, but drinks play a big role in a lot of our diets nowadays with taking in unwanted calories. And so that's something definitely to think about. And then the sitting still triggers. Keep something handy to keep your hands busy instead of food. A lot of times when we do sit down, you know, I, and myself included, I do want to grab me a cup of coffee and I won't necessarily eat something unhealthy when I have my cup of coffee while I'm sitting down. But, um, you know, if I'm not focused on the TV and I'm just sitting there or if I'm just twirling through my phone even, sometimes I might say, mm, I'm going to get up and get something, you know, just because just because I have idle hands. And so keeping something in our hands, whether we're uh, reading or whether we are, um, some people like to um, cross stitch or crochet or whether it's um, working um, word puzzles, um, things that can stimulate your mind, but keep your hands busy too. Um, also listening, actually listening to your body. Are you really hungry? When you think about getting up and getting something just because you have idle time, say, am I really hungry or am I just trying to fill a void right now in the moment? And practicing mindful eating goes right along with that. Then, as I said earlier, just always having a plan. Um, that helps us to cope with many, if not most all, of the triggers that we can encounter is always having a plan, especially if we know what our triggers are. And most people do know what their triggers are, um, you know, that would lead them to eating something or drinking something that they shouldn't. And if we have a plan in place and we have things handy and available to us to, um, to cope with that, then we will be more success successful. And so we would need to look at making an action plan log for this next week, um, you know, on how we would handle our triggers. Um, you know, what will I do if I have a trigger? Where will I do it at? When will I do it? How long will I do it for? And what might I face? What challenges might I face? And then my coping mechanism, when I do face this, how am I going to cope with this? Um, and so set yourself a goal. We all have something, probably that one thing uh, that we know that gets us every week or every couple of days. So between now and the next session, set a goal on how to deal with that and try to make that something you incorporate into your daily life because we're, we're doing these action plans to make things a habit for us on how to deal with things that we know are problems for us that can um, either lead to further development of diabetes or, or worsening um, of diabetes, um, which we're both trying to prevent with this plan. So um, you can make you an action plan.